for the Brookfield Selectman's meeting of May 7, 2019. Would you like to rise and join me in saluting the flag? The Pledge of the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have some warrants to approve this evening. Uh, I would like a motion to approve expense warrant 5119 for $4,722.91. Do you want to just do all three of them? Okay, and, another one, and then there's another warrant for 5719 for $164,476.94. And another one for 51019 for $156,387.55. We have a motion to approve these warrants. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now um, I would like to acknowledge reports from different departments the EMS report of April 29th, and the fire department report of April 2019, and the grant writer report of 2019. A motion to approve. Second. Aye. Aye. And I would like to uh, congratulate. We have some anniversaries from the uh, fire department. We have uh, firefighter Paul Comtois with um, 20 years experience. And we have Linda McLeod with 17 years. Matthew Rodwick with 11 years. That firefighter Daniel Esser with eight. And Michael Scott with one year, and I would like to congratulate them all and thank you for their service to the town. Yes. And it's nice to have them on board that they stay all the years that they have. I, can, I hope they'll continue to serve with us many more years to come. Okay, we have an appointment to make this evening. appointment to make. Uh, we have hired a new um, highway superintendent and his name is Ryan Poprian and uh, he's had his quarry. He checks his quarry out and the only thing that's pending is his physical. So I'm sure he'll pass that fine. So I'd like to have a motion to appoint Ryan as our new highway superintendent. You have that motion to appoint. Um, I'll second. And do we have any discussion with any of uh, I'd like to make an amendment actually that it's pending the, the clearance of his physical. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, otherwise, you, do you want to um, discuss anything else? Uh, no, he seems like a, a pretty skilled young man. I mm -hmm. know he was being kind of groomed for greater responsibility where he's at. I'm glad he had the opportunity to bring him on board. Mm -hmm. And I think, like I said, um, Donald Herbert, Donna, Donald's been with us for 30 year, 32 years, and Donald will be a good mentor for him. I'm sure he'll teach him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Cindy knows more about Chapter 90 than most of us. So yeah. Every yeah and Cindy, Cindy will have a lot of them, I'm <laughs> sure, also. <laughs> as as in well, the When is he going to start? 20. Oh, the 20. Okay, why don't we vote an amendment that this um, appointment is pending on his physical exam? Do you have that motion? Or motion second. Um, okay, we'll aye. Aye. And now, do we want to do this appointment? Yes, the okay, then I would like to appoint Ryan Pompriam as our new highway superintendent. Do you have that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. When is he coming on board, Mr. Chairman? The 20th. Ken, did you have a question? I thought I saw your hand raised. That was when he was coming. Oh, okay, yeah, when he was coming. Okay. Uh, we have here, we have some, an invoice uh, from the CBG grant for FY17 program, and the total amount is $2,000, and uh, we have to sign this, so I'd like to have a motion for the board to sign this. Motion to sign this, CBG FY17 program, number two. Second. All in favor, aye. Um, the 
to call tomorrow on the status and uh, join them in some of these apps. I'm sorry, Ed. what did you So there's a status call mm -hmm. tomorrow that like a monthly with update CBDG. with uh, Andrew and the, in this particular case it will be the uh, engineer who did the okay. They're having a hard time on the camera here. Oh. So um, there's a status call tomorrow uh, with Andrew Lowe uh, and the firm that's working through which portion of this? The Finney. The Finney property. Yeah. Okay. So great. And this is on um, the project involves engineering and design of drainage, water, and surface improvements in, uh, on Hayden and Hyde Street and Draper and Draper High. And this is the engineering design project. And this is for $2,000, and cents. And I would like a motion for the board to sign it. Motion to pay the FY17 invoice number 16. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now with the oh yeah, my voice seventeen. vacation carryover and this is for Don Herbert. He's uh, asking permission to carry the balance of his FY 2019 into 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then the second one is from Michael DeVall and he's asking for the same thing. I'd like to motion for that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the next one is here. Uh, this is uh, a, to sign the SWEB decommissioning bond. Now I think, and this is for a special permit and site approval decommissioning bond. And Sharon, do you know, could you speak on this please? In garbage mm -hmm. Okay, we uh, approved some time ago a special permit for um, an array, a solar array that snuck it under the wire before the moratorium on 8 Mitchell Hill Road. And this bond is to cover any expenses associated with decommissioning the solar array, should that happen, either at the end of its natural lifespan, which is estimated to be 20 years, or if something should go wrong with the array, or if there's an abandonment issue, or if the property owner decides they really don't want this on their property at all. This will cover the cost in the event that SWEB defaults on their responsibility to take the array out and make the site close to its original condition. Great, so basically protects the town. It does yeah. protect the town, and I should point out that the new bylaw that we're working on will automatically require a decommissioning bond, and that the amount will be advised by John Scannell, our town mm -hmm. uh, engineering advisor. Well, that's a long time. He has, yes, since I've been on the board. Yeah. But you can expect one of these for every solar array we approve from now on. Now, there is a spot. Now, you have to sign this. It says document shall be provided, and it says the intention of and is something else that you have to sign on here? I'm not sure what you have to test down here. Or contact the info? Oh, that's what it is. I have Cheryl look at this. She has to 
Right, since the select board is in charge of contracts, planning board can advise and yeah. have this right. vetted by town council, but we're really unable to sign it ourselves. Absolutely, but the notice is, uh, it anything? asks what. I see, okay. Um, see me after the meeting, I will fill this out. Sure, okay, okay. Sure. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. the signing on the borrowing document for the police station. Um, we are um, we're finance, we are signing a bond for a million dollars and $135,926. And um, Lanny was able to get this with... 2.5%. Um, yeah, it's 25 points percent. That's quite a bit higher than what it was previously. But, and it's with Unibank. So she was able to get all the funding through them. Because I know that she was out to bid last week, and this was the lowest one that came in. Things are solidifying in our financial yeah. world these days. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, the interest know. rates have been going up. Okay. I know so that, is that a one-year rotating bond? Yes, yeah, a one-year. Yeah, I know some of, the, some of the different um, loans are even going up to the prime. So every month they're, they're hopping.
go on while I'm signing if you want. Okay, we'll go on to other. Do you want to have, um... Well, we do that real quick. Yeah, why don't you do All that? All right, so we're going to talk uh, open space and thing attributes around open space. Mm -hmm. So what I have in front of me are some documents that we used the other night for our open space meeting to mm -hmm. verify um, the findings and, and put together the, the final document that's talking about open mm -hmm. space and plans. Consensus around the data that, that came in. Mm -hmm. What we have is the opportunity before that report gets done, but things that we need to be doing. So one of the first things that we needed to have as a priority this time around was the care of historic markers. And the highway department has agreed this year within the summer plans to do, do better at, at uh, taking care of the markers. So that's going to be something that's going to get done. And it needed to get done before we set the report spot. The second thing is the campground. We have three buildings left to be uh, removed or demolished or whatever. And so with that, um, Kathy's out looking for grant monies to be able to do that. And with the recent success on uh, uh, getting those grant funds to, to do demolition, we feel pretty good about that. So that's something that Kathy's going to move forward with quickly. And so we wanted to make sure everybody was aware that it's something that we want to get done. If we can get it done this summer, great. If it won't be this summer, it'll be next summer. But it'll be something that we, we're prioritizing. And then the second piece is that there was a whole long discussion about walking paths, trails, and whatnot. What Last year, we mowed in a certain way where we had a big figure eight of using the property so that the neighbors could walk. We'll continue that activity this year because it, it was light. And then probably the biggest thing that came out of this thing was when that subject of existing trails came up and where are the trails, there was a, a long um, interlude where we marked up one of the CMRPC maps, of town maps, of existing trails. Mm -hmm. And it's lit, uh, one, we had a, a group that's going to form themselves as a committee of sorts to continue to map the map so that we can have an understanding of the existing trails in town whether it's on public or private property, and what, what's going to happen going forward. So as I was explaining this to uh, the district director for fisheries and wildlife, what I also learned is that there's going to be a cutting program on fisheries and wildlife lands within Brookfield in the next few years. It's nothing great immediate. And one of the things that I discussed with him is that when, he, again, fisheries and wildlife is not all for trails. However, when they do a cutting program, there will be tow roads that are cre created. And so this will offer us an opportunity, if we're selective in our, our approach, that we could have additional walking trails within fishery and wildlife properties that people can take advantage of. So this will be part of this mapping of, of trails and, and uh, the like, so people can know where they can go. Because there seems to be a lot of interest in understanding the trails within the town. So that's the first thing. That the next day, I ended up meeting with the uh, deputy director of boating access. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the South Pond boat, boat ramp and what may be uh, an opportunity for the town to take over management of that um, area. We already do as far as the cleanups and, and the like, where the, the porta potty and uh, the uh, trash pickup benefits the boat ramp as well. So that there's an opportunity where we can actually uh, take advantage of the idea of feed. If we form a committee that is going to manage the beach and associated boat ramps and the like eventually, um, that this offers an opportunity to collect fees where people from out of town actually contribute to the town's expenses that we've, should, we've been, the burden, been our burden for all these years, where we can actually uh, cover the costs. So nothing's final. Tomorrow night at 6.30, we're going to meet in this room of those that are interested in forming the committee. It seems like we have um, a nucleus of people that, that, that have an advantage. What I want to be very clear about tomorrow night is what, what it means to manage what's going on. Because first the beach, maybe the boat ramp at, at South Pond. But what was also provided us was the opportunity to take the responsibility for North Pond as well. And what was also suggested, suggested is the boat access area on 148, that there ought to be consideration 
uh, for porta bodies and trash at that location as well. So given that that's their interest to have us take on more, if as long as what I would propose is that we go slowly to see what we can collect for fees. And again, any of those fees that are collected have to go right back into the maintenance of those areas. It's not for town use or other things. Uh, so that uh, as long as we can manage this thing, uh, we have an, may have an opportunity to, to at least uh, reimburse the town do, for the do, do we need to get an article on the warrant to do our involvement fund? That's I was just going to mention I had that for last week and we pulled it because we didn't know where we were. I would say at our next meeting we should do that because if we have a committee, and I believe after tomorrow night we will have a committee, that we then have a reason to have that article. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. You need to keep, we need to keep that money if we're going to keep all this going. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so those were successful yeah. meetings, and uh, we'll just keep it going. By the way, that article is in town council's hands because they're trying to figure out how to legally do it. I think you're yeah. in a little with the emails. Yeah. And, 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 even, and even if we can't, even if we can't, like funnel the return funds from from. Uh, property moving out of a chapter right. to it, at least if we establish the fund itself, we could receive oh. those smaller local receipts yeah. to it. So that would be the second article that I would like to see back on the warrant um, as far as the APR lands or chapter right. lands to go back into open space, but again, we can fight that yeah, battle. Okay. Right, right. But, the, but the big one would be just establishing the fund so that it, it, at least these smaller local fees would have a place to go. Right. And again, I'm, I'm proposing July 1st of July 1st uh, for the agreement, just so that we can say one year, let's see if we can make this work. Right. So that's what I have. Again, two successful meetings. Thank you for all the time. Let's get it. Get me. Beth, do you have anything on the other before I I had a couple of things, although one of them, it, one of them is kind of a pull forward of the request from the CIPC. Mm -hmm. uh, that's under correspondence. Uh, the first one, is, the first aspect of it is, is we mi we missed an opportunity with the with the um, warrant articles, and I wanted to get um, clear consensus from from us before I sent out some, some communication to the department heads. Mm -hmm. Is that there were some really significant changes between what got presented in some cases only weeks ago to the CIPC and what showed up in the warrant articles for the dollars requested under certain capital improvement warrant articles. So I, I have my sheet sitting at the house from, from last week's meeting. I wanted to make certain y'all didn't have an issue if I send out to the department heads that had radically different numbers in what they submitted for the town meeting article versus um, what they had uh, presented to CIPC and say, hey, we need to make certain that we're better aligned on what we present to one committee versus what shows up on the warrant articles. And, and we as a board need to try to have, even if it's a draft plan in front of us as we're going through the warrant articles, and just make it a habit so that we recognize those deltas as we're going through it. Um, so I think that's important, uh, but I didn't want to just, you know, send it out and then and not have, have your concurrence that it's a message that we can get. Um, now, now, granted, we have to be here because, in part, our computer plan and the information that we communicated, there's a lot of confusion right now between the uh, advisory committee and capital improvement planning committee because we have historically funded the computer replacement at a certain level, and, and that's not, um, we didn't necessarily give it to CIPC as part of the capital plan, but it probably <coughs> should have because even though we're the operations yeah. budget, it, it, it's over the, the threshold amount and it really is, is something that should be presented to them in, in at least a semi formal yeah. plan. And they're pushing for an article to the, the advisor. Uh, definitely wants that to be an article. I don't know how you do What do you mean? Right? So, so, so it, it, could, it, could yes. go, it could go either way, it depends. Um, there's no real need for it to be an article um, because it's it's actually a recurring expense. I mean, we usually have eight thousand, and I think where did you land for a request was fourteen. So again, 
What was, wasn't it 20? 27. Yeah. Well, no, we were supposed to split that over two years. So that was the discussion was that we, we had actually had that at one of our, at one of our meetings. What the recommendation was that that um, we had was that yes, it's going to cost us twenty seven thousand dollars to replace all of the computers, but they don't all need replaced yeah, right. between now and January. Yeah. And I understand the correspondence that we got from Larry, but the fact of the matter is, there's a number of machines yeah. within the town that can install Windows ten without a problem. I have a I have a Hewitt Packard. I should have brought it. The thing's a brick from like probably around like 1995 that's running Windows 10 right now because it has enough memory on board to do it, okay? So w what we had talked about and what I had presented to the CIPC had been like 13 five a year for the next two years for the computer replacement. Now we could put it on as an article, we could put it on under operational budget, um, or we can, as much as I didn't want to delay some of the computer expenditures, since we're not doing some of the other major capital things, the hardware replacement could wait until the fall, okay, as far as I'm concerned from a fans funding perspective, because you can pull the switch on purchasing computers that fast. You could buy computers in November and have them fielded by January and we're done. <coughs> it's actually, that's what, yeah. it, that's what, <coughs> what advised yeah. us. When we yeah, that. so, so, Honestly, I think that's probably the direction to go with that. Um, I would still like to see us go back to advisory about ensuring that we have enough from a standpoint of like our recurrent service funding in order to at least explore some of our options to get away from the canopy. I think that that does fall under operational versus a capital yeah. nope. expense necessarily because it's the recurrent fees. Um, and. Uh, and it doesn't involve the purchase of hardware. It's just changing from, from what we have now, which is software as a service, to a different mm -hmm. software as yeah. a service. So, um, and then finally, I think the big thing in the CIPC's request is just I don't have enough time um, during the business day, which is when they're available to hold their meetings, to regularly attend. And, and I'd really like to revisit uh, if she's willing to accept the appointment since she attends anyway. Uh, potentially um, uh, nominating or appointing Kathy as our designee to, to that committee. And my only pushback to that is that, that with the limited number of hours that she has and the things that she's doing, right. it's, it's a balancing act. So we Hasn't she been going in though? Yes, yeah, she has. She's been, has, she's so been going anyway. And, and, and the information she has is pretty critical to the overall capital and, plan. And so maybe it makes sense. And, and, and it's just like with, you know, our, our, our treasurer is supposed to be an active member of that. I think we really need to have a discussion with Lonnie, even though she's 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 in an interim role right now that it needs to be well, supported right now, by her office. Well, right now, you know, she's so quite good yeah. on her plate, so she really doesn't have time right, right. now to go in. Right. And she needs to stay focused she on what she's doing. Right. So, but, uh, and again, if Kathy could play that role, then the communication would, yeah. would occur. Right. Okay, so, so we can speak to Kathy. Yeah. So, so but I, I would. Yeah. Kathy said <coughs> um, she had some hesitation, but she said if the board of selectmen wanted her to do that, that she would do that. But again, it's the hours. And what she said is that basically she does go to the CIPC meeting when she can. But I think her hesitation is that if she were, were a, a member, then she would feel obligated to go all the time, and she's not sure she has all those hours to do that. So I don't know. She, she could probably make it more frequently than I can. <laughs> if she makes it to fifty percent of them, she's doing better than I can. Sometimes they do last quite a while. So. Yeah. Well, maybe what? Okay, so let's have Kathy do it. If, if we need a backup to that, then I can back her up. But right, and I, and I can try to back yeah. back up that as well. So maybe that's the way we're going. Maybe in between the four of us. Yeah. Right. We can rotate there. Right. So let's see if Kathy can handle it. Great. But right. If she can't, then right. we need to phone it up. And, and the flip side is, and, and and I think the committee has been open to this in the past, is that if she has a. If, Yes, those meetings sometimes will last as much as two hours, but they're, they're a group that understands if you walk in there and say, look, I have a hard stop at, and it's an hour from then, and then they will make every effort to cover the, um, cover the, the topics that are most pertinent to, to you, particularly if you, if you communicate it up front, yeah. or, or either up front or even in advance of the meeting. So, you know, even if if she says, you know what, I only have a certain number of hours, I can only come for the first hour of every meeting. It's 
it's great. Yep. So. Okay. so if you want to mention that to Kathy, I know she's there for an hour or so, okay. it would be good. What's next? Okay, what's next? Okay, I met um, today with uh, Eric White, who is the regional manager for the Pioneer Valley Commission. And uh, also I met with Eric Kinshek, who is uh, certified public accountant, and he runs a club that helps municipalities. And it was, and it was the, the all the financial team we met with him today. And um, he and Eric works with uh, himself. He's been a treasurer collector and he's been a finance director in different towns. So he also uh, he's very well very well knowledgeable with municipal governance concerned and all of the staff that works with him. And so we all sat down and we told him, you know, some of the problems, you know, that we were having here. And we went through everything. And he came up, if you'll see, he came up with a proposal that you all have here. Yep. Really if you have one, if you want that, have you read this? I have. And he's he's telling everything that basically needs to be done here in the town. And he said himself and probably two other um, campus staff, they will actually come, be coming here in Brooklyn to do it. And then um, Monday, one of his staff members, uh, her name is Laurie Barkus. She is doing the town of Holland right now. But she will be coming in probably on Monday. She's going to meet with Marilyn Park. And from the county, and she's going to show her all around. And uh, Laurie is going to take over doing the warm. So, do you need a motion to move forward with the plan? Yes, I would like to have uh, a motion. I'll, I'll make the motion now to hire Eric Kinship. And, and what he's going to do, he's going to get all of our financials up to date in the town. And I'd like a motion to hire Eric. We have that motion. Second. Any discussion? Well, no, I, I, there's a couple things that come with this. Okay. One, we had CMRPC saying that what they've been doing with those other towns, mm -hmm. and especially the towns north of Amherst. Oh, you got, I have that too. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. important. Okay. Okay. I said okay. to have the indication that CMRPC uh, mm -hmm. suggests that this yeah. is a good idea. Mm -hmm. To have Pioneer Valley coordinating this thing, mm -hmm. what we're doing is getting the benefit of a number of like towns, which is a fantastic thing, so that we can see best practices and, and, and hopefully move what we're going forward. What I suggest is that we take the fund. Dee had worked on the updating of the financial policy document uh, through the treasurer's office. That was the last thing to do to get through that document to get it current to the current practices that we have with today. And what I would like to do is with them coming on board to take that document and refresh it with respect to the accountant's office to make sure that we're consistent with whatever whatever the new process is going to be, that we have it documented and then we'll follow. Sure. Okay, I'll mention that. And then um, Eric Weiss there, Eric is going to be drawing up all the contracts because the contract is from Pirates of Battle. And um, he said that we don't have to, they took care of, like, you know, they went up to bed when they found somebody. So we don't have to worry about the children or anything, but they took care of all of that. So um, one of the towns that was involved with them, Huggiston was, and Huggiston's decided now that they don't need services that are left open for us. Excellent. So we're involved, and then after, even after that, they said that they can come in for so much, you know, probably cheaper than what we're paying a town account. They will come in and do our accounting, and they, that's a decision you know that could be made by us. Because he knows that you know it's far few in between that you can find people with municipal experience, and this is why he started this company. I have a couple of quick questions. Um, he gives us three phases. Did he give a, a, even an estimate of what the timeline would be for the phases, or is that going to be contained within the contract? It, it'll be within the contract. Because he really doesn't know until you know, until he really gets involved. And he was because he's going to uh, work with each individual department. He's going to do the accounting. He's going to work with the, the collector, the treasurer, and then he's even going to go into the water department also because there's a lot of 
there hasn't been any reconciliations done by right. uh, these departments. That's the key. Right. And he's, he's going to go in and meet with all of them. And we really don't know what the timeline is. It's going to take a moment. I can, you know, call him and find out what he feels the timeline will be. Would look like, yeah. I, I would be curious. I mean, we need to do it. I'm, oh, yeah, not, we need I'm to. not saying that, that oh, we yeah. have any option other than, than yeah. this, this yeah, one. Yeah, we need to, we need to do this, so we need him here. Right. And it's not, he comes very highly recommended by the Department of Revenue. I had um, shot out an email to Mary Jane Handy, who's in charge of Boston, and told Faith the progress. And Eric said she, she um, called him right up off the bat. And she said, Oh, I'm so glad you're going into Brookfield to help them out. So, so, with regards to funding this in next fiscal year, because I know we have the funds remaining from a standpoint of. of accounts uh, so. remaining salary and, and the funds we had set aside for third party work related to our books at the beginning of the year. So we have the funds to, to start this. Do are is there any do we know yet what we need to talk to the advisory committee for for next year or would, or would we just fund it basically tran transition the accounting line uh, for salary to be salary or or contract sure. support. Probably contract support. Yeah. And um, what um, he suggested today um, that we should put anything that has to be done right now until we know just what our money here is in right. town. Absolutely. He said we should probably, if we have enough in stabilization, take it out of stabilization. That's what he suggested. Oh, right. So if so we did have to do some sort of yeah. a capital I, uh, article at yes. the town meeting, that we should yeah. go, go out of stabilization. Uh, okay. so, and so I'd like to uh, make a motion on that. Yeah, you have the motion on the floor. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, so is the, is the motion is to, to authorize uh, uh, to our chair to procure yeah. the yeah. services Service. of the services. Okay. I'll second that. On the table? Aye. Okay, and then um, Eric, is, Eric Weiss is so we'll have the contract so that we can sign that off. So we should be planning on a meeting next week? Well, I don't know. He didn't really say when okay. he was going to get it, so we'll okay. let us know. Well, do we want to put a meeting on the calendar and just cancel it if they don't have the documents to us yet? Right. I will. Okay, maybe we put a meeting on for next week. We'll see. If we don't, we can cancel it. Yep. Okay. And then something else that um, Eric discussed with me too today was um, I was saying how we have the snow and ice deficit and different things and we usually use like a special town meeting to clean everything up from FY19. He said what a lot of the communities have been doing, they haven't been having special town meetings. He said they have been including this in their annual town meeting. And he says specifying say the first say five articles and numbering them five and making sure that it says that these are cleanups from FY19. And he said the state, this is what they've been doing. And he says it saves a lot of time by putting it for the annual. And DOR buys in? Hmm? DOR is? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Do you, you have a problem with that, Beth? No. So so I, I, I've always wondered why we didn't just specify yeah. that we were to be doing prior year work. And that's what he said. He said a lot of the communities are doing that. And he said it just saves time. So we wouldn't have to have the special at 630. Or do you want to start at 630 and we'll do the whole town meeting? Yeah. Start at 6 30 and do the town meeting. You want to start it's <coughs> posted as a special, so let's see if we can well, well, yeah, but we're a month out from it. Yeah, but we have it's not posted yet. Oh, yeah, you're right. Well it's been posted in the sense that we've got in and out it's out there, but yeah. Yeah, okay. but yeah but say that it's <coughs> gonna be combined with the annual. Okay. Because that's what that was his suggestion that from him. Okay, and then another thing, um, I had a few questions from the employees today, from a couple of employees wondering <coughs> whether or not they're going to be getting the raises, raises and things. And that's another question. He said, too, he said, we really don't know where our monies are as of yet, right. whether or not we can give them a raise. No, that, 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 
Yeah, yeah I, and I think we need to actually do a clear formal communication about that. Is yeah. that you know, and and something to the department heads related to all of this, really all of the the capital uh, expenditures. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't want to have anything on there that's not safety or or, no. or right. security related for all intents and purposes. Um, and to let them know that we need to pretty much level fund everything yeah, until this work is done. Um, I think the question that we really need to address is, um, and, and we can't make any guarantees because we don't know what the no, res end results are going to be, but that we'll make every effort to, you know, revisit it and, and if our financial posture makes it a responsible thing to do to rec make any changes yeah. retroactive back to the beginning of the year, yeah. just yeah. like we would with like a police contract yeah. or what that's have what, you. Yeah. Because that's what some of were kind of concerned, so maybe we should shoot an email out. Email. Yeah, I think we need to come out with some formal communication that, yeah. look, we're not doing capital um, on the annual town meeting. We're not doing raises. No. We're not doing any, any major money. major money, like no. funding level changes for departments. Um, but that, um, you know, once we, we've identified mm -hmm. the true posture of the town, provided that, it, okay. that we're, we're continuing to be solid because yeah. even we've had these issues in the past, the, the end result of that reconciliation is that we've still been in a good financial position that provided that that's the case, that we'll make every effort to go go with our original plan. Well, again, the schools are living to their budget. The highway is the next budget, and they're living to their budget. budget. Yeah. We should be fine. Yeah, we should yeah. be fine. But, but the, the reality is we have to get this work done. Yeah, we have to get this work done. Now, uh, another thing, did you talk to the library at all? I have talked to the library. I have talked um, to the Hellers as well. If we want to talk about the details of either of those conversations, we really would need to take it to executive session. Okay. But you said you were going to talk to yep. them. I, I've, I've spoke to, to both entities. Um, I have an invite to their Monday, they have a Monday steering committee meeting around the, the building. Uh, I'm going to try to make it to that. Um, there's, there was already some communication between the Board of Trustees and the Hellers about some, some options that they want to explore. There's nothing settled right now. Um, there's a lot of different ways to continue the relationship that are on the table right now. Um, and, uh, and I did explain to the library, and, and frankly, I explained to the Hellers where we sit right now from the standpoint of kind of this, this fog of war around our, our financial situation. Um, so I don't know that we came to any conclusion, but there's a lot of um, at least discussion going on between the different entities. So if we were to have a meeting next week to go into executive session yeah. to just yeah. have to do this. Let's do that. Yeah. So you want to do like, even if we don't hear back from Eric Weiss? We'll do a short one. A short meeting. With the, okay. Yeah. With the, just, yeah. just related just to Just so that. we know where we are. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Okay. All right. Now, is there anything else here from that? Oh, and then, and then another thing we, they had discussed too, um, we were discussing, you know, how right now Ronnie is the interim town accountant and, um, or treasurer. A treasurer, I'm sorry, the treasurer. And they all said, like, Marilyn said that she's doing a good job and Dee Dee's willing to stay on as a consultant. And, and uh, Eric said from what he has seen too, so they have, they recommended that we don't want to go changing anything in ministry. And so I did some investigating today. I went to the town bylaws, and there's nothing that says that we really have to go out and advertise the position of, of um, treasurer. So I wanted to make a motion tonight that we appoint um, Lonnie Crustacea as our town treasurer. Yeah, that's second. Um, he has a discussion with that? Uh, I'll second it for discussion. Uh, and I, I made the motion, yeah. and, and I just my concern, and maybe we don't need to vote this tonight, but the idea would be I, I want to just make sure everybody is on 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 the same page yeah. that we're going to work together because I we had a similar situation in the past where we, we made a move like this, yeah. and then all of a sudden people were concerned yeah. about what we did, and and I I, I think it's if we can have a conversation around. This is what we're trying to do and trying to accomplish so that we keep the team pulling together. They all seem to, to
you get along well this morning? And everybody, they all seem happy with what's going on. And finally, you know, that uh, things are going to get better physically. And we'll, you know, we'll be able to start fresh from after this is done. They all, they all seem very happy about it this morning. And they all seem to get it all fine. And I mean, if we don't vote to appoint her, you know, say tonight, I would just like to vote to appoint her until we approve this financial. Oh, good. And again, we've talked about that yeah. and because we put the meeting on until into the fall anyway. Yeah. There would be no changes until that fall meeting. Okay. Absolutely not. I mean, just we can't afford to. So, I mean, pardon me. Right. What we have concerns about? Um, I have a number of different concerns. One of them is I think that there's 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 a, a perception, and, and I've seen a lot of it. Um, where the tendency to not post positions is, is, is really problematic. Um, it, it, I don't know that there's necessarily anything specifically in our bylaws about it relative specifically to the treasurer position, uh, but it, there are issues with it in just general good HR practice. There's issues with it, I believe, there may be some mass general law concerns with regards to, to not open posting positions like that. Um, I, I really do not feel comfortable appointing anybody to a position that has not been publicly advertised, period. It has nothing to do with the person. It has nothing to do with the position. It's something that I've seen go really wrong in a number of entities that I've been a part of over a number of years. And it's just not a good practice, period. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, and the flip side of that, is the situation that we find ourselves in. Absolutely, which is why I'm like, I'm not in a rush to go post it tomorrow, but I am, I am, I am unwilling personally to vote for a, a three-year appointment for anybody in any position unless we have, have publicly posted it, reviewed resumes, and, and done interviews, done you know references and background checks. So obviously, since she's already bonded, that's not an issue with Lonnie. I'm just not willing to go there on any position in this town. I almost flipped a nutty when we even from an internal perspective that we, we hired people into positions uh, without having post publicly posted those positions. Okay. I, I will not sign another wage authorization where we haven't posted the position, period. That's just my personal stance. So and I certainly won't vote for the appointment of somebody into a three year responsible position without posting it. Right, and, and so the other piece to this is that we continue the way we are yep. until the fall. Yep. Again, it was going to be spring, but now it's going to be fall. Yep. And uh, again, this individual has done good work yeah. and is growing. And so that under public scrutiny, back to going out to post, um, she would have a leg up. Yep. Okay, so I would like to, um, okay, I'll change it. I would like to reappoint Lonnie until after we have our fall town meeting and our Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we have that motion for sure. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Then I have, you know, we have, before we get into correspondence, I have did, um, did both of you uh, get any, uh, an email from um, Deb Boyd today? <coughs> Carol, was, did you follow that to them? I did, I followed it to them. Well, um, what happened is, um, Linda said that you two wanted more information regarding the article of uh, your task squad. Oh, the, and the originally on like one nine, <laughs> I had sent it out, but who knows? My emails. No, I had seen. That. I had seen that. Um, was that enough mm -hmm. of an explanation? Because she seemed to well, feel it was. I talked so. to her. I talked to Deb today, and she said they were. They just want to make sure that we're putting it on the budget. Oh, as far as the. The doors and yeah, what it is. Yeah, oh, she yeah, said yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. The so doors and everything. Already been placed. And she said. Um, it was only, our share was only 8000 of that. And she said we wouldn't even start paying that until FY21. Yeah, that email I saw, yeah. and I don't see there's any so issue she was, with that. So she was just concerned because she said she wants, because all the other towns have it on. So she wants to make sure that we have it on. Makes sense. Okay. Okay, yeah. so that was, I'm, I'm okay with that. You're okay with that, yeah. Because like she said, they're going to go out for bid on all of this in the fall, and they'll probably start some work toward the end of FY20, and then they'll complete it in FY21. And that's when our first payment comes from. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then if we don't have 
can straighten out, but it's not a problem. Oh, well, we'll help. Others can sit here, though. <laughs> we'll hope. We have to be optimistic and we hope that everything will be straightened out okay. by then. I'm sure. We'll fight the good fight. Yeah. Okay. Now, next here is on correspondence. Um, this is from the um, Community Development Block Grant. And it says on June 19, 2019, the DHCD program representative Cyrus Field and fiscal representative Don Martin will be conducting a monitoring review of Brookfield's FY 2017 CDBG and the CDF grant number 00792 at the offices of Central Mass Region Planning Board. Okay. And Angela is um, aware of this. Okay, and this is another one from Chowder. Um, they just want to make our customers aware that around June 1st, that WNYT Channel 3 um, will, Channel 3 now is locating on the Spectrum Channel 185. And then this is another one too from Chowder. This is their um, financial budget sheet. And, um, we have an attached copy here for Charter Communications 2018 uh, financial balance sheet, and this would be available in the selectman's office if anyone wants to look at it. And uh, oh, that was the CIPC PC asking for. Um, oh yeah, that yeah that was from Bob Falk, and they were asking for Kathy to be appointed as a member at large to the Capital Improvement. So do we have anything else that anybody wants to bring up to me? Motion to adjourn. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.